Hi everyone, Andy here uh, with the latest installment of the new modality of lectures for CA4012, Cisco Machine Translation. Um, yeah, we're all adapting to this new modality. I hope you're all well, firstly, and uh, comfortable where you are. Uh, I know we weren't very comfortable in um, CG04, but this is a bit of a drastic solution to, to that. But uh, let's do our best and get through the, the material. What we're gonna do is convert the slides into a short uh, set of videos uh, and then have a Q&A session for, for any of you to come back with any queries on any of the material. So, uh, so yeah, what we've been doing over the last number of weeks is look at statistical machine translation, which was the dominant paradigm in machine translation for about 30 years, from the late 80s when the IBM team uh, started out doing experiments with English French, a relatively easy language pair, of course, uh, up until around you know 2016, which is where these slides will end. Uh, we'll, we'll show that um, at a competition uh, arranged around that time that uh, neural machine translation uh, surpassed various uh, different Cisco machine translation systems uh, by some distance, uh, not just with respect to automatic scores like blue, but also uh, via um, quite a, a fine-grained human evaluation. So, uh, you know, we still use statistical machine translation to some extent today, uh, especially where large amounts of parallel training data are not uh, available. But um, it's fair to say that neural networks are the state of the art today in, in machine translation. None of my PhD students use statistical machine translation anymore. And probably in around five to 10 years, these will, this will be the, the, the only way of, of, of doing uh, machine translation. So, um, so yeah, so neural networks and, and translation, uh, obviously based on, um, uh, based on um, neural uh, networks. So we're gonna go through those. Um, the nice thing about uh, looking at the, the, the neural um, technology is that it underpins a range of different uh, application areas, not just machine translation. Um, but also speech recognition, uh, caption labeling, um, um, sort of uh, describe, you know, describing um, images in terms of uh, a series of features, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, while teaching you a little bit about the underlying technology for, for, for this specific application of neural machine translation, it will be wasted for a range of other uh, disciplines uh, in the area. So essentially we're gonna go through uh, neural networks, starting with feed forward neural networks, uh, ending up with recurrent neural networks, which are an improvement on the feed forward uh, networks. We'll show you what the state of the art is in neural machine translation today. Um, look at potential improvements. Obviously that's a bit of guesswork um, and then uh, conclude. So uh, essentially, you know, you would have done this uh, not just in DCU in your maths classes, but also at second level. You know, this is very uh, rudimentary stuff, you know, looking at functions. Uh, so here's a, the, the sum function, which takes a series of, of arguments and just adds them up uh, to give you the total. Um, we can do a, a weighted sum by giving each of the uh, numbers that we're going to add uh, a particular weight. Yeah, so what we're doing here is uh, multiplying each of the input numbers by uh, a particular random weight uh, to give uh, an output uh, number. So inputs and outputs. Um, we then are gonna apply uh, an activation function to our weighted sum function. Uh, uh, and the one that we're gonna use is the sigmoid curve, which you can see here on this slide, uh, where you can see initially the, the, the growth is very slow and then it's approximately exponential. And as saturation begins, then the growth starts to slow down. And at, the, uh, and at maturity, the growth stops altogether. So uh, this, this gives, the nice thing about the sigmoid uh, function is that it gives you a number uh, between zero and one. So as uh, you know, these can be approximated to a probability of a particular string or a particular translation or a particular caption for an image, or what have you. Uh, so if we apply the weighted sum to uh, the numbers uh, that we've just seen, and we just look them up uh, on the graph, if we just go back to the, the previous slide there, so the, the, out, the output from logistic is zero, uh, and then we just go back to the, 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 the graph, and you can just follow the x-axis up to zero, and we read off the, the y value, 
uh, and we see 0 0.5. So, so um, the the uh, application of, of uh, the two functions there gives us the 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 the, the output score of 0.5 for that particular weighted sum. Uh, uh, um, function and then the logistic function applied to that to the output of that function uh, and a neuron is essentially what we've just seen there the fundamental building block of a neural network um, uh, so it's an activation applied to uh, uh, a series of input numbers which have weights associated with them um, so essentially what we're going to do in uh, neural machine translation will end up with nodes either switched on fully which has a number you know close to one switched off you know which means that they have a number uh, you know uh, uh, close to zero or it'll be some sort of transition node uh, which is partly on somewhere between zero and one and of course these are inspired by you know you know biological neurons but uh, you know you can read more about this uh, in your spare time if you so wish um, I'm going to stop the first part of the the slides there and return to this just in a minute